We have the best instrumented area really in the whole world in terms of using regulatory and research grade sensors. This data can benefit not just Salt Lake Valley, but it can really be a regional tool as something that could be used by everyone in the world. We make measurements of greenhouse gases, PM 2.5 and dust in real time, and we maintain the longest record of greenhouse gas measurements over 20 years here in the Salt Lake Valley, and then we've added other measurements as time has gone on. We do this in real time because it has implications for those of us that live here in the valley. It has health consequences. In addition to that, we collect data to develop models and make predictions for the future. The Utah Division of Air Quality operates uh, stationary sensors, and they are sort of the, what we call the regulatory sensors. That's the gold standard. However, they are, they're stationary, they're not mobile, and so therefore they, they capture a certain subset of the city spatially. What we wanted to do is look at where the gaps are. And so we could see, for example, that there are many areas that are under-studied, under-measured, under-reported. And so that's why we, we wanted to expand and have a mobile platform. Back in uh, 2014, a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Logan Mitchell, he had the idea of having air quality sensors on a mobile platform. With a team from the Department of Atmospheric Sciences and Biology, uh, they devised a small box that's fit under the seat of the tracks driver. So that was really the pilot project, the first phase. And then afterwards, it was standardized to now, we have the sensors on a box on top of the tracks. And that's uh, where we have the, what we call the inlets, where the air goes in, where all the processing takes place. It was important to put it on the tracks as opposed to a bus, because at that point, only the tracks was electric. We now have uh, three track trains outfitted, two that run on the red and the green line, which are from the same depot, and then the one train running on the blue line. All the lines have some really interesting um, aspects. So with the red line, we can see air quality as it varies from a fairly high uh, place, which is right here on campus, the medical station. And then as it goes across, it cuts diagonally through the valley and then ends up at daybreak. So we can actually really see the two lips of the valley, so to speak. Then uh, the green line covers from the airport and it does a, a U shape to West Valley. So that really observes one of the fastest growing cities. When we added the blue line, now we could actually look at what is going on on the southeast part of the county. There's not a lot of growth and development in that area, or traditionally hasn't been, of course, very different from the southwest part of the county, which is quickly developing. So we are actually able to take a really deep look at, at air quality in many places that we couldn't see before. For greenhouse gases, the measurements on the tax trains provide us a really dynamic view of what's happening. And we can get a sense of the heat trapping gases that the city is emitting. We, you saw something really interesting during the COVID shutdown in which there's a clear dip in the lead of all of these gases. That gives us a sense of the response of our air quality to human behavior. And what we've learned over the years is that Air pollution varies in space and time. It's a very dynamic picture. The Salt Lake Valley, in many ways, is this, this real compelling experimental air chamber we have where, where we're doing these studies. Let's just take the red line. They start at the university hospital. They go all the way down town. And that's the elevation difference. And then they go back up at the other end at daybreak. So it's measuring this, what we call the elevational gradient of pollutants. And we couple that with stationary measurements. The stationary measurement on our building, the Atmospheric Science Building, this one. Also the measurements on, on top of the Snowbird Tram Building, which is way high up, 10,000 feet. Um, and differences in elevation reveals uh, differences in pollution which then reveals differences in emissions of these pollution. So that's yet another one of those very unique things we can do in Utah. With the tracks, we can actually really look at a neighborhood scale. What is the level of pollution that 
uh, that community members are exposed to, and we have seen substantial differences across socioeconomic strata. Another thing that we really want to be uh, doing now is now that we have this long-term history, air pollution is one piece of the puzzle. Moving further down the line, and I'm talking in the next uh, few years, what we want to do is look at what the conditions are and then have a much more detailed forecast. So just like we have the forecast, for example, almost the weather forecast by a city level, I think it would be wonderful to actually have an air pollution forecast because each city has a different unique composition of, of inhabitants. The theme of environmental justice is something that is very important to all of us to consider. If not for really the altruism and really the fact that we're all humans and we're all living together, the economics makes sense as well. Some of the work that I've been doing has been to really look at how the communities in the West Side are affected by poor quality and to really look at some of the disparities because the reality is the valley has its specific shape. And so primarily PM 2.5 settles in the lower parts of the valley, which tend to be the West Side of Salt Lake City and West Valley. So we need to help inform uh, the populations there, the stakeholders there and the community members so that they can do take measures to protect themselves. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say Salt Lake City actually has some of the best air quality measurements in the entire world. We can combine that with uh, medical studies, with uh, social economic studies, and, and really, I think, show the way for other cities around the world.